floods and droughts. The West regularly experiences greater fluctuations in its yearly precipitation than any other region in the United States. The Western U.S. has very unique needs for weather information, and they differ a lot from back East, where hurricanes and tornadoes are key. Out here, it's water. Scientists believe that impending climate change will exacerbate these already variable weather extremes. That variability really puts a stress on our water management systems, whether you're talking flood control, water supply, or environmental habitat, etc. Meteorological phenomena known as atmospheric rivers have a significant impact on the variability of precipitation. Every year, most people in the West Coast recognize that a big chunk of our rain comes from a few big storms, and we've discovered what we call atmospheric rivers because they're these narrow regions in the atmosphere where it's very moist and the winds are very strong, and those winds push that moisture along as water vapor, much like a river on land pushes water along as liquid. So in one atmospheric river at a given moment, it's transporting on average as much water vapor as 20 times the liquid water from the Mississippi River into the Gulf of Mexico. These are truly rivers of moisture in the atmosphere, and they represent just a few percent of the circumference of the Earth if you add them all up. Ongoing research into atmospheric rivers could play a pivotal role in the way Northern California prepares for winter storms and manages water supply. When they hit California or the West Coast, they often last about a day. We might get six to 10 in an average year. If we get fewer than that, we end up in drought. If we get more than that, we end up with flood risk. Since the 1950s, the Russian rivers had several floods and scientists estimate that 87%, almost 90% of those floods were due to atmospheric river events. As a water manager in a water management agency, Atmospheric rivers are very important to understand so that we can respond to them, anticipate them, and be able to develop facilities and operations that can accommodate them, whether we get too few or too many. Key research on atmospheric rivers is being carried out in the Russian River watershed. The Sonoma County Water Agency and the Scripps Institution of Oceanography collaborate with experts from California's Department of Water Resources the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the United States Geological Survey, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. One of the reasons we're working on the Russian River so much is because it is sort of ground zero for the greatest impact of atmospheric rivers. They get about 50% of their annual water supply comes in maybe 10 atmospheric river events each year. Russian River is really where we can learn a lot. Satellite imagery combined with airborne reconnaissance aids scientists in monitoring atmospheric rivers as they form over the Pacific. Scientists monitor storms as they make landfall in California at four unique atmospheric river observatories. One is located in Bodega Bay. Every hour they measure precisely the conditions that we need to see in order to decide whether there's an atmospheric river hitting from a very precise perspective. So winds in the atmosphere aloft and moisture aloft, when we measure those accurately, we can determine whether it's an AR or not. Because as these storms form up over the ocean, there's a lot of uncertainty as to how strong they are, what their orientation is, how long they're gonna last. By measuring these things precisely at the coast, we can get a little heads up. Is the storm gonna be weaker or stronger than expected or later or earlier? Scientists are hopeful that emerging forecasting techniques and technology will soon allow water managers to more dynamically adapt to atmospheric rivers. Working with Sonoma County Water Agency and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, we're looking very carefully at a reservoir on the Russian River in Northern California called Lake Mendocino. It has for many years now suffered from drought and they have less water in it than is ideal. The way reservoirs operate in many cases, not all, but in many cases in California, is they are kept relatively low in the winter so that they can provide flood control. And if a storm hits and the flood space is filled up a bit in the reservoir because a big storm hit, they then release that water slowly after the storm and get it out of the way so they're ready for the next storm. 
It is hoped that studies being conducted at Lake Mendocino as part of the forecast informed reservoir operations proposed management strategy could serve as a model for efficient reservoir operating procedures. We're looking at how we might be able to use forecasting to manage the reservoir levels uh, so that we can improve water supply capacity for people and also for fishery habitat while preserving flood control. We're estimating 10,000 acre feet of extra water we're gonna hypothetically try to save in Lake Mendocino. That's enough water for 20 or 30,000 households for a whole year. If that could be achieved, it would take about two days if there was a storm coming to release that water safely from the dam and then another one to three days for that water to travel out of harm's way past Guerneville, California. So what that means from the weather side is we need three to five days lead time confidence that we're not going to get an atmospheric river for the next three to five days and that water could safely be retained. We believe we're still doing the studies. This is all hypothetical. No one's changing any operations based on this. We're just teaming up to think it through. Advanced forecasting techniques may someday also help mitigate flood risk. It's possible that if we see a really big storm coming in, we could release water down below the water supply pool. So give up some of that water supply and then we feel confident that the storm will come in and replenish that water. But because we pre-released some of the water supply, we actually have a much greater flood control protection because now the reservoir has much more storage to handle the flood waters from the storm or the, the runoff from the storm. Increasing our knowledge of the behavior of atmospheric rivers is essential as we adapt to the effects of climate change. The models and the forecasts in our region all agree that precipitation is going to become even more variable. So the dries will be drier and the wets will be wetter. We need to be prepared for both drought and flood. Every year in California, that's the message. 